Well, hey guys, it's Chris. From stones that helped us decipher the hieroglyphs to strange new finds on mummies, here are eight amazing discoveries from Egypt. Number 8. Cemetery of Thoth You may not believe this, but even today the rich history of Egypt makes it so that many treasures can still be discovered. As recently as 2018, an entire necropolis was discovered. The city of Minya is in the Nile Valley, and archaeologists were doing some work outside of the town when they found a large burial site. Now, this isn't too unusual per se, because the people of Egypt have long believed in elaborate burials for their people, especially higher ranking ones. But here, this particular necropolis or cemetery wasn't for a large family or even a group of royals. Instead, it was made for a group of priests. These particular priests worshipped the god Thoth, who was the god of wisdom and the moon in the Egyptian pantheon. These priests were buried along with their families, and every single one of them had their bodies wrapped in a certain way, the high priest being wrapped in a bronze sheet and put inside their unique sarcophagus. Some of the priests even had their organs removed and placed inside individual jars. Egyptologists speculate that just to document the findings of this cemetery will fully take around five years. Number 7. Unfinished Obelisk An unfinished obelisk was found in Aswan in Egypt, and it's clear that the Egyptians were working on it when they suddenly decided to stop. Now, should they have finished the endeavor, this would have been the biggest obelisk ever made by them, at about a height of 138 feet. But something happened, and this gigantic monument never made it out of the ground. Even so, it hasn't stopped architects and Egyptologists from studying this unfinished obelisk in order to learn more about the ancient Egyptians. Egyptian building process. The obelisks themselves were carved from a single piece of stone and were named in order to reference how they pierce the sky. In the context of the Aswan obelisks, they were carved out of bedrock and then moved out of the quarries, moved towards the Nile River, ferried to their final resting place, and then brought up to full height by more workers. So lots of places where they could crack or break. When it was first discovered, many thought that this unfinished obelisk was actually a monument that had fallen over at some point. Then, after it was fully revealed, it was discovered that there were cracks in the large granite stone, so the workers abandoned it rather than risk damaging it more. Number 6. The Sphinx if you were to go to Egypt today, the two things that would likely top your list of go-to places would be the Pyramids of Giza and then the Great Sphinx. The structure of the Sphinx was modeled after its namesake in Egyptian mythology. Described as a half-lion, half-human, it was a spiritual guardian depicted as male and wearing a pharaoh's headdress. The Sphinx is also truly built to last. It was crafted from a giant limestone slab, which is very hard to erode, thus making it perfect for the winds and sands of Egypt. To this day, there is great debate over when exactly it was made, or even who built it and to what purpose. A general consensus is that the face of the Sphinx looks like the late pharaoh Khafre, which would put the construction of the monolith at around 2500 BC. It's also agreed that it may have been built to honor him, since he built the second pyramid of Giza. The Sphinx has been lost and rediscovered several times, due to the fact that it's been buried by sand. Only reason we can see it now is because of a decades-long excavation of the site. Coming up is something we can actually thank Napoleon for. But first, make sure you subscribe to World List and click that notification bell so you can keep up with the latest videos. Number 5. Rosetta Stone during one of Napoleon's campaigns where he tried to take over Egypt and failed, near the town of Rosetta, a group of soldiers was working on a fort when they decided to take down a certain wall. Among the group was Pierre-Francois Bouchard, and when the wall fell, he found a slab of stone that was unlike anything he'd seen before. To be more specific, it had writings on it, but it was in different languages, including one he recognized. This was the official discovery of the Rosetta Stone. Upon its finding in Egypt in 1799, research immediately took place, and it was found that the stone was actually from 196 BC. All the more curious about this stone was that it had three languages written on it. The first of the languages were hieroglyphics, the symbols seen on Egyptian tombs and pyramids, and a true hallmark of the country and culture. 
Then there was Demotic, another Egyptian language that the people used. But the third language was the biggest surprise. Greek, a likely remnant of the reign of Alexander the Great. After the surrender of the French, the British got the Rosetta Stone into their possession, which led to Jean-Francois Champollion and Thomas Young examining and deciphering the entire stone text. Through the Greek version of the stone, they were able to translate both sections of the Egyptian text. And through this, the world now has a way to decipher the past. This is important for a very simple reason. At the time, we couldn't even hope to translate the Egyptian writings and hieroglyphs that lined their monuments, so this Rosetta Stone essentially unlocked the entire history of Egypt for the world to read. Through this discovery, we've learned more and more about the ancient Egyptians, their cultures, and have found many new discoveries along the way. Here's a fun fact, did you know the pyramids were not built by slaves, but in fact by paid laborers? They were even buried in tombs beside the sacred pyramids. Number 4. Third Kingdom In 1902, a series of tombs were discovered by a legendary Egyptologist named Flinders Petrie, but despite finding them, he chose not to examine them himself, and thus left them alone for someone else to explore. The prevailing theory is that he didn't think it was worth his time. Fast forward 112 years, and some archaeologists decided to take up the charge and do what he didn't. And what they found in those tombs was a king, specifically one from a third kingdom of Egypt, dating back 3,600 years. His name was King Senebakai, and he ruled a central part of Egypt before the unification of the nation. Now this is significant for numerous reasons. The first is that it was held to be true that only two kingdoms of Egypt were around before the unification. But because of the discovery of King Senebakai, that's now been proven wrong. The second fact is that it helps fill a big hole in history, and the placement of this kingdom was literally between the other two, which means there's a lot more to piece together about the region. Finally, a third kingdom was theorized by many, but no one could ever prove it was real outside of vague references. But these tombs proved the third kingdom was real. And thus, history is rewritten once again. The teams of Egyptologists are still searching the tombs, and the more they find, the more complete the history of the kingdom. Number 3. The Temples of Abu Sembel Two temples reside near Aswan, Egypt, and were constructed by none other than Ramses II between 1279 and 13 BC. These massive temples were lost for some time before being rediscovered by Johann Ludwig Burckhardt in 1812. The place was completely buried, so he and his friend Giovanni Belsoni actually went and dug out the entrance so that they could explore it. Aside from the massive structure itself, the temples of Abu Sembel are punctuated by four massive statues of Ramses, though only three remain mostly intact. Along the feet of the statues are carvings of Ramses' wife and children. The temple itself is actually dedicated to the sun gods of Egypt, and the temple was constructed in such a way that two specific days of the year, February and October 22nd, the first lights of the sun will actually penetrate the temples and shine all the way into the innermost sanctuary. Not far from the main temple is actually a smaller one. It's dedicated to Ramses' wife, Neferatari, and her god, Hathor. Number 2. The Oldest Tattoo Ever During an excavation, two bodies were found in a shallow grave, one of a man and one of a woman. While at first there was nothing special about the two, a smudge on the bones of their arms caught the eye of many, mainly because the scientists couldn't figure out what the smudges were. They didn't conform to any known burial rites of Egypt, and the fact that they were in a shallow grave proved that they were unprepared for burial. Then in 2018, a scan was done of the smudges, and what it revealed was that the smudges were actually ancient tattoos. On the male was a bull and a sheep, and then on the female were S-shaped tattoos. The key difference of this was that these tattoos were documented as being 5,000 years old, which is well before the first known tattoos in Africa and the rest of the world. Number 1. The Tomb of Tutankhamun 
Easily the most famous archaeological find in all of Egypt is that of the tomb and sarcophagus of Tutankhamun. The legendary pharaoh's burial site was found by a group of archaeologists in 1922 and headed up by Egyptologist Howard Carter. The tomb of the pharaoh was already a priceless treasure, but when they moved to the sarcophagus, they found that the legendary ruler was actually held within three of them, and the final one had treasures laid inside, as well as a mask to cover his face. Carter himself was amazed by the sights he beheld when he entered, and he can be quoted as saying, as one's eyes became accustomed to the glimmer of light, the interior of the chamber gradually loomed before one, with its strange and wonderful medley of extraordinary and beautiful objects heaped on one another. Tutankhamun himself was a beloved leader of Egypt, mainly because he was one who tried to restore Egypt to its former glory in terms of how its society was run. However, due to health issues, he actually died rather young. And he was so young when he ruled that he was actually referred to by some as the Boy King. The only downside to his discovery was that there were rumors of a curse that sprung up when the tomb was opened, as some of the archaeology team did die soon after they examined everything. But this was later debunked as a story by the team to ward off grave robbers. Thanks for watching. What did you think about these discoveries from Egypt? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and be sure to check out the next video.